Good afternoon, everybody, um, and welcome to our March webinar on edit checks. My name is Sarah Platt, and we are going to be talking about doing edit checks, daily edit checks for the breakfast and lunch program. Just so that you're aware, this webinar is being recorded, and if you have any questions, um, please put them in the Q&A so we can address that. So a couple of things that we'll be reviewing uh, today, our agenda is covering a review of the meal counting and claiming process. We will introduce the edit check requirement and how to complete it. And as always, we'll have time for questions. Before we begin, I wanted to review some key terms that will be used throughout the presentation. Uh, when we talk about meal claiming, this is uh, when reimbursement is provided for each meal that meets meal program requirements that is served to an eligible student. The meal must meet meal pattern requirements and be counted at the point of service or POS. Attendance factor. This is the average percentage of students in attendance on any given day or any given time frame. It is calculated by uh, attendance divided by enrollment and edit check. The edit check compares the number of reimbursable meals served each day with enrollment and attendance adjusted enrollment or attendance factor. So we're gonna start with a quick review of the meal counting and claiming process. So like I just said, to be eligible for reimbursement, the meal offered and served to an eligible student must meet meal pattern requirements. The meal must be counted at the point when the student receives it, not before, and only one meal per student per day and meal type may be claimed. When I say point of service, um, that meals may only be counted at a point, that's the point of service is that meals may only be counted at the point when the student actually receives the reimbursable, reimbursable meal. Again, not before that. So point of service would be included um, during field trips when meals are sent off sites. And um, any meals that might be brought to the classroom or alternate lo serving location. So again, in those unique situations, meals cannot be counted for reimbursement prior to them being served to students. Some unacceptable meal counting procedures, um, tray counts attendance counts, head counts. Um, these are counts that are taking place because you're assuming, because the child is in attendance, that they're getting a reimbursable meal. And that is why they're not allowed. Again, you cannot claim a meal for reimbursement until the student has received that complete meal. And any incomplete or second meals are not reimbursable. That's for example, if a student takes a milk only, or a student takes only two components on their tray. Those meals will be considered incomplete and are not reimbursable. So now we're going to move on to edit checks. Just gonna go back one slide there. Edit checks are one of the internal controls that program sponsors need to have in place to ensure accurate claim for reimbursement. And that's because the reimbursement you're receiving is federal dollars. Edit checks must be completed prior to um, um, completing your monthly claim. When performing an edit check, what you're doing is comparing your student meal counts to student enrollment and attendance adjusted enrollment, which is attendance factor. If you are operating a special provision, what you're doing is comparing total student enrollment and total meal counts. Performing edit checks is required for all schools, whether you are operating under a traditional claiming process by free reduced paid or under a special provision. And again, the goal here is to identify any possible 
inaccuracies and ensuring that the claim is as accurate as possible. If when conducting an edit check, uh, you notice that meal counts are close to or exceed the number of students enrolled or the attendance adjusted enrollment, this is a red flag to you that would require investigation. So some patterns to look for when completing the edit check would include finding meal counts that are close to or exceeding the number of students eligible, seeing the same count each day, or having a high percentage of students eating, and then any patterns, if there's a repeat in numbers or every Monday is the same count, any sort of pattern that you might see there is a flag that should be looked into. So if you use an electronic POS, you may be lucky, your system may generate an edit check report for you, and I have a sample one here. Um, this is an example, and as you can see um, at the top of the edit check report is the name of the school or the site, the time frame. So this is um, a month time frame for which the meal counts are being generated. And you can see the meal counts for both breakfast and lunch are reported by free, reduced, paid. And then in the center is the edit check where it shows a percentage of each free reduced paid category um, that participated. So there are no red flags on this example, um, but if you saw um, a high percent, percent there of participating, that would be an edit check to look into. So if you do not have a electronic system to generate an uh, edit check report for you. We do have a manual one that you can use, an example here on the screen, and this is available on our webpage, but you would be required to complete it manually. So again, this worksheet is available. You're not required to use this one. You can use another one or create your own. This is just here as a resource for you, and we're going to walk through how to complete it. So you will need a worksheet for each month. You're gonna start by entering the month and the year, as well as the site or school name where the meals are being claimed. You're then going to have the day, you'll notice the day of the month along the left-hand side. And if you have, or you will have weekends in there, you would just leave that date blank for any weekends or school vacations or non-school days. So here's an example. We filled out the name of the school. There's our enrollment column, the free eligible column. And then the free eligible would be multiplied by the attendance factor. And then you would enter the number of claimed meals. In this case, we're doing it for breakfast the same process would apply to lunch, you would enter the number of claimed breakfasts for that day. And you would repeat the process in the reduced category and the paid category as well. And at the end of the month, it would total meal counts by free, reduced, and paid. And those are the counts that should match or should be entered on your claim for reimbursement. So here's an example um, that I filled out using the form. Again, at the top, you can see the month that we're completing the edit check for. You can see the name of the school. The attendance factor is 93%. So to get the attendance factor, uh, most schools do keep track of the average number of students that attend. So you could get this from your school office most likely. If you don't know it, we tend to use 93% for a high school and 95% for an elementary school. So what that means is that if you have 100 students enrolled on any given day, you're not gonna have 100% enrollment most likely. So on any given day, 93% of the students attend for a high school and 95% of those students attend for an elementary school. So you'll notice in this example, on March 4th, um, the attendance, so there's an enrollment of 364 students. Um, the number of eligible is 208. 
times by the attendance factor is 194 students. And on that day, they claimed, so they had a meal count of 200 breakfasts. Now that's below the number of students eligible for free breakfast. So it may be fine. It may be an accurate meal count. However, because it's above that attendance adjusted number, you would be, be required to look into that and see why that is. It's also a lot higher than typically we see for breakfast counts there. So you'd wanna look into that, find out why that is, and then make a comment on the far right side. And then on March 12th, you'll see the reduced eligible students. There's 77 reduced eligible students times by the attendance factor is 72. On any given day, you have no more than 72 students um, that are eligible for reduced breakfasts. And on this day, they claimed 79 breakfasts. So the reduced eligible column turned red. It's saying that's not possible. If you only have 77 reduced eligible students, there's no way you can claim 79. So that's why that cell is red and you are required again to look into why that is and make an adjustment. Then you'll also, it may be difficult to notice this. Um, it's easier to do when you have a full month in front of you. But one of the things I noticed is that each, I'm gonna assume it's Wednesday, it's the third day of the week. The, the meal counts on that day are consistently lower for all categories and in both weeks there. So that leads me, again, now I'm seeing a pattern. Um, it's not leading towards overclaiming, but it's giving me some information. Why are meal counts so much lower on that day? Is it a delay start day and it's affecting my breakfast counts? Well, maybe you wanna do um, breakfast in the hallway so that as soon as students come in, they have access to a breakfast. So that's just giving you a pattern that might be helpful to your program. It's also important to note that your enrollment and your eligibility may change over the month and that's okay. That's because students um, come and go. They enter and they withdraw and also you process eligibility at any point throughout the year. So you would see some fluctuation probably more at the beginning of the school year, but you will definitely see fluctuation in enrollment and then the number of students eligible and that's okay. So to um, access the sample edit check worksheet that we have available, it is on our website. The link is at the top. It's on our lunch program page. And if you scroll down to the daily operations form, you would click on the link for daily edit check. And that's where you would find the edit check form. So that completes our webinar on daily edit checks. We have time for questions, if there are any questions in the Q&A box. And we don't have any questions coming in. Um, if you think of anything after the fact, please feel free to reach out to me or anybody in our department. We'll do our best to help you. Thank you for your time today and have a great afternoon.